Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Second State Live. We're live from Chicago, Illinois at Ivy Lab Studios. We're bringing you music, uh, stories, and the best of uh, every corner of the music industry. Today in studio, we have Tommy Carroll, his band, and his collaborators. Tommy is a multi-instrumentalist and drummer whose debut album is called Not Amazing. Not Amazing explores his experiences living as a blind person, and it has a lot of interesting and pointed perspectives that I think you'll like to hear. Before we get started with the live performance, let's check out this artist profile, which we put together. We went to Tommy's apartment and home studio in the, on the north side of Chicago. Uh, let's take a look. When people ask, like, do you do journalism anymore? Do you do journalism anymore? I say, yes, I'm... I'm always doing it. I'm just doing it in a different different medium, different type of storytelling. So take a step back and let me go on with my life. I'm Tommy Carroll. I'm a, a local drummer, musician, producer here in Chicago. But music was the thing that I always found myself spending time on and really finding purpose. Like, I, I was a journalism major uh, in college. After a while, I just kind of realized that it's, it's what I need to be doing. And, you know, since this, this year, I started pursuing my music full time. The album I released, Not Amazing, uh, dropped that in January of this year, 2017. But it was really a culmination of both feelings and musical concepts I was working on, like getting at this thing that I haven't seen much art, art directed at yet. Social, emotional complexities of being someone in society who has a, a disability. Not Amazing tackles my internal monologues as a blind person living in the 21st century. Every time in my life that I've done something, you could have been learning to skateboard, like competing on like the track team in, in high school or whatever. It's always like, that's so amazing, that's so amazing. People aren't gonna realize like how much strength or effort you're exhibiting. I just need to start by combating this like very, very base level human instinct or societal con condition based thing that people do of just being like totally awestruck. Just getting going to my gig, you know, around the corner. I wrote some charts and like my, you know, my band's coming in. Like, you know, you should come check it out. And they'll just be like, oh. like, it's just so beyond them. So, so not amazing is just verse chipping away at this idea of like, I'm out and about, and it's fine, it's normal. Like, don't get all blubbery about it. I think I was most drawn to the drums because drums are the the energetic heartbeat of what's going on. You can convey a lot more to a less initiated ear. I think pursuing musical complexity and, and, and excellence on your instrument is great, but that's why I'm drawn to drums and also doing a lot of synthesizer programming. I'm working on getting better at my actual keyboard playing. Drummers get a bad rap, but I think there's really a lot more emotion in the instrument than people think. I would say there's can be more emotion, or at least as much in the drums as like a piano or something. I think for other people with disabilities, my, my best advice of, it is about building community in the end, but you do need to learn, learn to stand for yourself first and on your own terms. I am who I am, I do these things and it's enough. It's, it's a, it, you have to realize that like wherever you're at is enough. You still have time. Almost no one in my immediate vicinity is going to understand this so i just got to realize that like they might not see this but i know deep down that what i'm doing is what's best what's best for me in the long run so take a step back and let me go on with my life. hey mom why are his eyes funny like that hey man can you see it all Hey, dude, uh, where are you trying to go? Whoa! Get out of his way! I hope you get better. Well, that's a funny-looking man. Mommy, what's wrong with his eyes? Hey, watch it. There's a red light ahead. Do you want me to hold your hand? Daddy, what is the thing he's walking with? Hey, watch out. 
getting dark out. You want some help? Hey, hey, watch out, man. Does your mom know where you are? Hey, man, sorry. Do you need me to tie your shoe for you? Be careful. Hey, come this way. No, not, no, come on, this way. Uh, don't you know there's a red light there? Do you need me to tie your shoe for you? Wait, where are you going? Look out, uh, there's a deep curve. It's getting dark out. You want some help? Can I play for you? Hey, man, let me help you. Come on. Watch out. There's cars coming. Can I help you? Mommy, what's wrong with the sounds? Hey, watch it. It's red lighted. It's getting dark out. You want some help? Uh, excuse me, sir. Do you have anyone helping you? Whoa! Get out of his way! No, no, come on, this way. Hey, man, sorry. I'm not doing it. Hey, watch it, it's a red lady. Do you need me to tie your shoe for you? What's he doing? Can I pray for you?
right, that was Tommy Carroll with Can I Pray For You and his his band behind him. Um, Tommy, I'd be really interested to know, I'm assuming I know the answer, have you heard all of those sayings before? Oh, yeah, those were directly written uh, when I, yeah, I've heard every single one when I, when I was doing the, that, the, so that track you hear along with the music, I actually did that as a standalone piece, just the, the audio itself for uh, an art exhibit kind of critiquing, you know, the benefits, but also the, the shortcomings of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, this was back in, uh, in, in 2015. And the producer of the exhibit, he just took me to a studio. I had all that stuff written out and we just called a bunch of people up and everybody just took turns around a mic kind of acting and saying all that stuff. But yeah, those are all like, it really captures accurately t to the tone, not just the words, but the, the tone of all, you know, people with good intentions. But, uh, you know. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting <laughs> that you picked Can I Pray For You? Like, that's a really loaded question that's asked uh, to many different kinds of people. So I'm interested why you picked that one in particular. It, it's just the most visceral. It's like the hardest, like, you know, prayer is something that's it's really deep to them, but it's also super kind of just uncomfortable to me when somebody asks to do that. So I think that's just the one that, like, creates the most tension. Right, and, you know, you have this kind of angry, uh, well, definitely energetic uh, backing uh, with the with the band behind you, and it's improvisational jazz. Uh, that's the foundation you picked here rather than some of your other songs on your album, which are more electronic in nature. So I'm curious why you picked that style for, for such a song. I mean, because, you know, it's really just because dealing with this stuff is is improvisational you know i can walk the same path every day to the grocery store to wherever you know to the train and it's you know even if it's in my some other place i've been living for this past three years you know i'm like i'm still gonna get most likely have at least one if not two to three of those asked you know and it's just, it's always improvising how to deal with it. Should I be mad? Should I be, I haven't found out the answer, you know, so I'm just improvising in life. So I think that was the most fitting and also just the energetic qualities of, of that kind of style of groove. Well, great. Well, um, it'd be great if you could play another one. What are you going to play next? Uh, yeah, we're going to do a tune off the record uh, called Oh Beverly. Uh This one's, this one's a little bit different. This one's more about, uh, this one is dedicated to a really close friend of mine. And this is just kind of celebrating those really close friendships in your life, you know, you know, there's a lot of songs that celebrate like romance and stuff, but this is that kind of romance when it's just like, it's those friends who are always going to be there for you no matter what. You know, I know I have a number, uh, a number of them in this band here today. So, uh, at least I feel, you know, maybe I don't know if they're thinking in their heads now, they're like, oh, no, I'm going to mess up this tune because I don't want him to feel like that. But we're going to play Obevery. Awesome. All right. Tommy Carroll and his band live on Second State Sessions. All right. You guys ready?
All right, that's Tommy Carroll and his band and his collaborators. And Tommy, uh, quick question. How did you end up writing an instrumental? A lot of people just write instrumentals because they can't write lyrics, and that doesn't seem to be your problem. So kind of just curious about uh, what you think that does for your, for your uh, message. I think the beautiful thing about music is it can capture the nuances of emotion that especially in English, there aren't words for. Um, and to me, that really uh, captures the welcoming feeling of the person who I kind of wrote this tune for, the kind of feeling that I have there. So if you just really take the time to listen to it, listen to the harmony of it and things like that, uh, yeah, I really think it can con convey the feeling. Awesome. And, um, I mean, do you think that it's just more effective at communicating things when you don't need words? Like, do you just get jumbled up in words and you just get distracted by them? Or what do you think about that? Um, no, I mean, I really think, like, I, I, I'm really, I, I, uh, I just think it's different, different devices for different purposes. And I think the, the feeling that I wanted to convey with this song just came out best in this instrumental. The, mel the melody and then the contrasting warmer harmony groove section really just it just conveyed what I wanted to convey. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, before uh, we get going with the next song, I think we're going to invite up uh, Michelle, right? Yeah, awesome. And uh, uh, what, what's, what song are you guys going to perform next? Uh, I know, but if you could just introduce it and uh, the, uh, the theme of it uh, just real quickly. Uh, yeah, the song's called uh, Underestimation. Michelle, what's it about? <laughs> um, of course, it's about being underestimated. Um, but it's, it's sort of a tribute to artists, like taking control of your artistic um, destiny. It's, it's while I walk on a trippy path, it's talking about um, how we're, as, as artists, so often we're, we're underestimated and people are like, how are you going to make money doing that? You're never going to do nothing. Um, so it's really a tribute to artists because it's saying that um, I think generally artists really aren't concerned about the destination, but the journey. So that's kind of what underestimation is about. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, how did you guys get this collaboration going? Like, what did it look like on your end? Well, Tommy sent me the instrumental with the with the name on it, and it wasn't really something I would traditionally do, but I don't know. It just came to me, and it it just it was perfect, and it yeah, it just was perfect to me. Awesome. All right. Well, let's hear it. Uh, this is underestimation by Tommy Carroll, and uh, if you have any questions for them, uh, feel free to let us know. All right. Here it goes. Just you wait and see Just you wait and see Just you wait and see just you wait and see, just you wait and see, just you wait, wait and see, wait and see, wait and see, why do I feel so underestimated, hey, life ain't mad. Music is a medicine, I stay sedated While I walk on a trippy path If I learn from the pain, it is no mistake Don't get it twisted, we are clearly on a different wave And may they bury me a legend on my dying day They afraid, so of course they underestimate but what is life if we can't make it to our liking Must confront subconscious blockage hidden deep within your psyche 
I never doubt when there's a drought Get well acquainted with the cloud I clear my specs Just respect you can't hinder my vision now Always been a little reckless Plus I never fit in crowds Alone or so with stoner goals You may think it's sink or swim I'ma hit this dope and float Only death could kill my dreams But it's all murder that I wrote Oh, yo And life can be the slaughterhouse of hope Zombies walking in the streets Cause all this greed done stole our souls We base our worth up on these notes We can't take them when we go At least my dreams are linked to freedom Break the bondage when I flow They don't have to rock with it Just so it can be dope I serve them fiends so perfectly You heard of me, then you know You're okay, don't make me great You know it's not my hope But I will be the concrete rose That they said would never grow So Why do I feel so underestimated? Hey Life ain't math Music is a medicine I stay sedated Well, I walk on a trippy path If I learn from the pain, it is no mistake Don't get it twisted, we are clearly on a different way And may they bury me a legend on my dying day They afraid, so of course they underestimate They afraid, so of course they underestimate Tommy Carroll featuring Michelle Renee, right? Renee, that's that. Just Michelle. Just yeah. Michelle. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, just real quick, Tommy. Uh, I f- did you put such a relatable song on your album like this because you wanted people to like get a glimpse of of what you're going through? I mean, like, I think that most of us have felt underestimated at some point, if not all of us. And it seems like that's like just a really good grounding point for a lot of people. To- totally, man. That's the, that's exactly the idea. Um, you know, there's definitely some. Su- it's a super personal record, but this one's definitely. You know, in every hyper personalized thing, I think there's really universe. You know, there, there's things that we all are are striving for, and all the things that we feel like we're. You know, we feel lonely or if we feel lost when we don't have it. And I think when you know people don't have confidence in us, I think exactly. Yeah, it's. You know, it's definitely, it and that's why I reached out to Michelle too, because it's like, I wanted to bring in collaborators, and I thought that'd be a, a topic that, like, it could mean so many things to different people, but also the, all those different things are tied together by a common thread. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks so much for performing, Michelle and coming by. I really appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. All right, cool. Well, um, uh, I did get one question from an audience member, uh, and as uh, you guys know uh, here live, this is just a trial, so I got it from uh, one of our uh, uh, camera guys and uh, DP, Justin, and uh, his question, which I think is a pretty good one, is what's your favorite thing, uh, almost a diss, if you will, to say to someone who is not blind, doesn't understand, and doesn't understand that they're taking up your time. Like, do you have anything that you just really want to say to them that is kind of a bit of a zinger? Most condescending question. You, think of. Most condescending question. Okay. you know, I the the thing is, I've learned that like condescension. They don't like people who are in that mind frame. Don't even they they don't consider that someone like me can be condescending. So that kind of bounces <laughs> off. So normally, I. 
I, I, I well, no, well, this, I'm, I'm going to tell you is I usually opt for the approach and I do this frequently. Like the nicest, the nicest thing would be like, oh, I'm okay. Like, do you need any help? But you know, I, I, I really try to make it more like, or like, you know, try to, uh, you know, tell, oh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to, uh, get to like a location that I might even just make it up at somewhere where they probably don't know where it is. And then when they start to get like a little bit, get stressed, just like keep going, like making it hard. Like, oh, I thought it was over there. Like, well, come on, can't you help? And then, you know, then obviously like you find out that a lot of people obviously just, they help, they offer help when they think it's easy. And then when, you know, it starts getting involved, then you can start to feel them panic. And, you know, that's kind of my revenge, you know. Right. Making awesome. people panic in like a kind of like a sub psychological way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have driven a car before, but it wasn't it wasn't uh, with intimidation in mind. Oh, okay. There were no there were no bodies on the line, as it were. That's All right, cool. Well, uh, we're pretty much good on time for now. So uh, why don't you guys play us out with something? What uh, what are you gonna pick here? This last one's called Open Minded. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a we're kind of workshopping it here. This is gonna be on the new uh, on a new record I'm working on called Listening, but surprisingly, it's uh, about people who aren't open minded, even though it's so called open minded. Could you say that you heard it here first? Uh, yeah, you, awesome. You, you That's could unless like someone in the audience has hacked my hard drive, <laughs> or or Carl's been giving away the demo bounces from the audio session from the recording session. So I don't know. Maybe some some campers at Camp Chippewa have heard it. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Shout out, shout out to Carl. All right. Well, thanks guys for coming and uh, playing on uh, on the show. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing this last one. All right. Awesome. Oh yeah. Also, co- go to tcdrums.com and follow me on SoundCloud and Facebook. All that stuff that's is yeah. the most important currency. All that stuff that we will put below so people can find. Open-minded. It, so. All right. Open-minded. We're staying open-minded. We're going online. All right.